What is up guys welcome back to another video here on Ranger Central and today we're gonna do something that's probably gonna give us a great laugh as today we are going to react to ESPN's projections for the New York Ranger players and how many points they're gonna score now the reason I'm deciding to do this I didn't even know that they did this this was apparently a while ago one I was on vacation so there was no way of me possibly even doing it and two I I saw one of the players on the Rangers projection for this year and it had me crying of laughter that they project this player to do so poorly but let's not even waste time let's jump into it uh leave a like if you enjoy subscribe if you're new let's jump into it so uh here we go let, let, let's just not waste time let's just not waste time so they project Mika Zibanejad who had 91 points last year 39 goals 50 uh 52 assists with a plus 25 rating, 20 PIMs, and 39 power play points. Wow, so they predicted a lot of things. Uh, so he, they're projecting him to play a full season, which sign me up if that's the case. A healthy Mika Zibanejad is always a good thing. And they have him getting two less goals at 37. Okay, sure, I disagree with that. I think he's actually going to score more this year. I think he's going to hit 40 this year because of the fact that he should be better 5v5, considering the team as a whole should be better 5v5, but again, remains to be seen. 52 assists, the same as last year, 89 points. So uh, they just subtracted two goals, plus 28 rating, okay. 18 PIMs, two less PIMs, okay. So it kind of is what it is with the badge ad. Nothing really egregious there, so we'll move on uh, to Adam Fox, who they have playing 80 games, so they have him being... A little less healthy. They have him scoring 11 goals, 61 assists for 72 points. So the same amount of points as last year, plus 26 rating. It, it just feels like so far these are just lazy <laughs> ways. Like they're either just changing a bit on the goals or just changing things around a bit. Nothing too egregious thus far though. Adam Fox, I could see him being better this year. I, I hope he is because of the fact that, or at least offensively I should say. I could see him putting up an absurd amount of points this year and be motivated to prove people wrong that he could be elite on both ends because of the fact that yeah he puts up good offensive numbers but at the end of the day he's not a point per game guy which is why probably he didn't win the Norris this last year if he was a point per game guy I'm sure he would have went with the Norris he would have ran away with the Norris and it wouldn't have been Carlson's 100 points just because he got 100 points because Adam Fox was the best defensively of the Norris finalists this past year. So they have him getting 72 points. I, I'm okay with that. Jacob Truba, they have him getting, uh, I'll cite for a second, 10 goals, 26 assists for 36 points, a plus 16 rating, 72 PIMs does not surprise me, four power play points. I don't think he's going to get much power play time, so I'm not entirely sure about the power play points, but... I will say, if they get 10 goals out of Truba, I will take that. As long as his defensive play is better, which a plus 16. I don't use plus minus as a good stat for defense, but hey, at least it's a step up from what we've seen. And then the Pims, hopefully it's not that much. I know he's going to fight a lot, and I know he's going to throw the hits a lot, which will get him to fight a lot, but I would prefer for him to not take that many penalties. Vladimir Tarasenko sneaks on here. We're not going to go over him. All I'll say is hopefully he's a Ranger at the deadline again, especially if he's going to put up the numbers they haven't projected at. By the way, I'm probably going to react to the full list that they did because they did this for every player in the league or at least most players in the league. Maybe I'll go through the top 50 or top 100 in a separate video. And, and then this is where we get to one of the first egregious ones. Artemi Panarin. They have him playing 76 games this year. Scoring 80 points, 23 goals, 57 assists, uh, plus 14 rating. Unless his defensive ability is going to be better and he's going to play more of a two-way style game this year than we've seen in years prior, I just don't see him taking that big of a step back in points. I know he's playing less games, but still that's less of a point pace than he has been on in previous years. I just don't see it happening. I think he's a lock to get 85 plus points at minimum. No matter how many games he plays, unless he's playing like half the season or 50 games. Like I, I'm saying if he plays at least 75 games, 70 to 75 games, he should be a lock to get 80 to 85 points, which I guess that would make what this is not bad. But I think if he's playing 76 games, you got to give him 85 points at the 
minimum. So not too egregious, five less points. But uh, again, I, I don't agree with that. And then 29 power play points. At least he's going to be producing 5v5 a good amount. At, at least that's a positive we could take away. Vinny Trocek, 82 games played. They think he plays the full season. 21 goals, 34 assists for 55 points, plus 14 uh, for his plus minus, and then 14 power play points. Decent year. I think he's going to be up and down between the second and third line. So not bad production from Vinny Trocek. Obviously a step back from this past year, but I would take 55 points from Vinny Trocek. Anything less, I'd be disappointed in him for that. So... We'll move on. Keandre Miller, they have him in 80 games played instead of the full season, scoring eight goals, 35 assists for 43 points, a plus 16 rating. And they have him getting some power play points. I don't agree with that. I don't think he's even going to sniff the power play. Maybe he will every now and then, but I think that's going to be Gustafson's spot. I've been saying it. And then Fox will get the top unit, of course. But uh, not bad. Not bad. I would take that year from Keandre Miller. I'd like to see him hit 50 points, but I would still take a repl uh, him replicating that 43-point season as long as the defense is there consistently. Now we get to the one that made me laugh hysterically. So, Chris Kreider, they have him playing 70 games. 22 goals, 15 assists for 37 points. Are you joking me? And 12 of them on the power play. I know he's a big power play guy, and he gets most a good amount of his points on the power play. Like you see last year, 17 of them uh, out of the 54 on the power play. But 37 points for Chris Kreider? I cannot agree with that. I, I think he is easily scoring at minimum 45. I, I think that you should pencil in 45 at least. But I think he gets 50 again. I, I think he gets 50 points easily again. And I think that that's egregious to have him getting only 37 points. If he's playing on the third line, maybe I understand that more. But who knows? I think he's going to split time between the first, second, and third line. He's going to play a bit everywhere in the lineup. But I cannot agree with only 37 points for Chris Kreider. I think that's egregious. Uh, Patrick Kane, not sure if he's going to be a Ranger. Hopefully, he will be back. Uh, but for Patrick Kane... 48 points in 60 games played. If the Rangers got that production for Patrick Kane, considering how much he would sign for most likely, he's probably going to sign in the ballpark of the um the, the 3 million range, 2 to 3 million range if he comes back to the Rangers. So I, I would take that production for Patrick Kane. I would. Uh, 19 power play points is a lot. So he would be back on the power play. I would take that production, though, from Patrick Kane if he ends up coming back. Uh, also, with Chris Kreider, I didn't even mention that they have him being a plus 20 with only 37 points. He is going to have to be on the ice for very few goals if that's going to happen. Phil Pedal, I can't agree with this one either. I can't. I can't. 60 games played, which I get that's why he has less points. And, uh, or no, 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 I'm reading the wrong one there. Uh, I was reading Kane again, but 72 games played, two less than last year. 43 points, like two less games, two points, sure, but I can't agree with this. I can't, I think Heedle is going to be a huge surprise for the Rangers this year. I, I really do. I have been beating the drum for a while. Maybe I'll make a video on Phil Heedle sometime soon and why I'm beating the drum so much for him to have a huge breakout year, but... How could you not agree or think that after the production he gave last year? 45 points in 74 games played. Nobody was expecting that from Heedle. We were expecting maybe 30 points, a steady increase from where he's been over the past few years. 45 points uh, last year was a pleasant surprise. And I think that they, he could get more. He's working off. He's working his behind off in the offseason. He has been going absolutely crazy in the gym. And I think that... He's going to be in for a monstrous season, and I think he's going to get some power play minutes, especially if Patrick Kane does not return. I think Heedle will be a huge surprise for this team. And then Alexi Lafreniere. They have him getting the same amount of points as last year. All I'll say on that front, if Alexi Lafreniere has 39 points again this next season, ooh... Say goodbye to Alexi Lafreniere at that point. Uh, they have to move him at that point because 
it's just not good enough and i know that people will say he has not got the power play time and that he needs to get those minutes but at the same time he's eighth in his draft class at even strength production i know he doesn't get a lot of ice time at even strength either i understand that but we need to see a bit more even strength production still from Lafreniere. And it's going to be tough for him considering the fact that he's going to probably be cemented on the third line at best the second line with the log jam at left wing. If he could play right wing, that would definitely help him. But we'll see. We'll see. But that this is a big year for Lafreniere. Uh, Blake Wheeler did not even look at this egregious yet again. Um... 61 games played, 27 points for Blake Wheeler, only 9 goals, 18 assists. I would be very disappointed for the price that he's at. I would not be mad at that production for a guy that's making league minimum, essentially. But I'd be disappointed if he took that far of a step back in his point production. I think we're looking at a 40 to 45 point year for Wheeler. Hopefully I'm wrong and he, do he ends up getting more, but I think that that's a realistic ask. 40 to 45 points for Blake Wheeler, and at worst, 35. I think 27 is very unfair for Blake Wheeler. Connor Mackey somehow sneaks onto the list when I don't expect him to play games, really, for the Rangers this year. If they get 14 points in 55 games from Connor Mackey, sure, why not? Eric Gustafson, they didn't get predictions. I don't know why they didn't for Kako, Lindgren, Goudreau, okay. So they didn't for some guys, they just... Chose who, and then Libor Hayek is not even on the team, and he sneaks on here. So, yeah, um, as you can see, now, uh, David Dayarnay, what is David Dayarnay doing here? <laughs> like, what? What is wrong with ESPN? Like, and then Anthony Greco, hasn't he been out of the organization? And did I miss something? Did the Rangers bring David Dayarnay and Anthony Greco back? Like, what? All right, uh, and then Gabe Perot just drafted, didn't even sign an ELC on here. Why not? Um, so, yeah, as you can see, ESPN is um, still out of touch with the game of hockey, and those were egregious, and we didn't even get to react to more, unfortunately. I would have loved to have seen what they had for Kako, for Lindgren, Goudreau, all those guys that they didn't mention, Gustafson, but... Uh, that was egregious. That was egregious. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I hope you guys had as good of a laugh as I did just looking at those projections. And I'm sure when I look at the entire NHL list, we're going to get an even better laugh at that. So let me know if you do want to see that video. I'm probably going to make that Filipino video soon. Let me know everything, though, your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. How egregious was that list? Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. And I will see you guys in the next one.